Hi guys, this is Debbie from Debbie J's Crafting Corner. Today I'm using another awesome digital kit from TaylorMade Cards for You. Before we get started though, do me a favor and hit that subscribe button and make sure that you also hit the bell so you get a reminder every time I upload a new video. You'll also want to check out Crafters Castle's monthly challenge. The challenge is Anything Goes and is solely sponsored by TaylorMade Cards for You. This month's prize is the Special Delivery Christmas Digital Kit that I'm using for today's project. And since the prize is digital, it means that the challenge is open worldwide. So be sure to check the description box below for more information, as well as a link where you can buy the kit. And make sure to stick around till the end of the video. I'll have a coupon code for you to get 20% off of your purchase of TaylorMade cards for you. I know we're just heading into November, but Christmas is right around the corner. So today I'm starting my Christmas crafting series with a cute vintage Santa shaker card. I'm using this beautiful digital kit from TaylorMade Cards for You and a few supplies that I already had on hand, like these snowflakes. This is from a bag of snowflake confetti that I got from the Dollar Tree last year. My initial plan didn't include any blues, so I'm separating the blue snowflakes out. For the shaker, I'm using this vintage Santa Claus postcard image. To turn it into a shaker, I'm going to use some Arteza foam tape, but I'm going to try something a little different. Since this tape is so wide, about a half inch, it's too wide for me to use on this small piece of ephemera, and I don't have any thin strips, so I'll make my own. I had a sheet of release paper from some address labels that I finished off last week when I mailed off all my Halloween cards, so I'm laying down a strip of the foam tape onto the release paper. Then I'm cutting a thin strip from that strip. This is going to be about a third of the width of the original foam tape. I think parchment paper or wax paper would probably work great for this too and I think that next time I'll try using my paper trimmer to get a more even cut. I'll also need a clear window for the front of the shaker, so I pulled a piece of clear packaging from my scrap bin. Then I cut it to the same size as the Santa postcard. I'm taking the thin foam strip that I just cut and running it around the edges of the postcard. Now since the acetate panel is the same size as the postcard, you could run it around the edges of that piece instead. Here's a quick tip. When you're putting down your foam tape, make sure that you butt the ends up against each other. Um, if you leave any type of a gap, you could allow some of your shaker bits to fall out. Next, I'm going to just burnish that tape down to make it easier for me to remove. I'm also using my anti static powder tool to eliminate any of that stickiness that might be on the inner edges of the foam tape. On almost every shaker I have ever made, at least one piece of the shaker bits gets stuck on the tape somewhere. Now I'm using my craft pick to help me remove the release tape on two of the foam strips. Now the reason I'm doing it on only two sides this time, it's, it's a trick I saw on a video recently that helps you to be able to put your shaker bits in easier. One of the problems I always always have with this is that I put the shaker bits in and then I have trouble lining up either the card that's going on it or the acetate sheet. You see I'm also adding more of that powder to that acetate tape piece because these little snowflakes are very very staticky. I had trouble getting them apart just when I was trying to sort them. So I went ahead and wiped off the excess powder with a paper towel and now I'm lining that piece up with the two edges that still have the, um, the 
release tape on them so I can get a perfect placement and they stuck down perfectly. Now I can open that window and put in my shaker bits without having a problem and taking as big a chance that they're going to get stuck into that adhesive. Remember what I said about the um, static? That very, very first snowflake I put in there was getting stuck to the wall. So I'm adding more of the powder that's in my powder tool to all of the snowflakes. Hopefully it will release them enough so they'll be able to shake around like I want. So on this little tool here, I came across it in my stash. I have no idea where it came from, but I think it is used for picking up beads. Um, it's, I guess, a bead scoop. Anyway, I'm using that to help me get all of my shaker bits in. Another thing that's nice with having that window that I can open is that when all of those little snowflakes were piled up and wouldn't move, I was able to go back in there and move them around a little bit. Now I'm getting some seed beads out again using that little tool and just putting in some green and some red that go perfect with Santa Claus and his outfit and his little sack. So I'm going to go ahead and put in quite a few of those and then I'm going to take out another um, little container. I've got of some more seed beads that's in a different color of red and add them to it as well. I think that's enough of the shaker bits. It's shaking really, really well. Now I'm going to go ahead and remove that release tape on the other two sides. So I'm just taking my craft pick and getting the edge basically the corner that is still covered with the tape um, with that release tape I'm using that one then pulling it back and then getting the other side and doing the same thing that corner is the one piece that um, is still open so it makes it easier to work from that edge then I'm going to seal it down and I've got a great little shaker there that nothing is sticking um, anywhere that it's not really supposed to and I didn't have anything falling out or <laughs> like I usually do. Anyway, um, I decided that I needed a little frame to go around Santa. So what I'm using here is actually from the kit as well. This postage stamp frame, I made that from one of the little postage stamps that's included with the kit. I did some stretching and enlarging in Microsoft Word. So all of this was done in Word. And then I put a, a white box over the image and cut everything out. Now you do have to do some measuring and make sure everything is about the right size but it worked out perfect. Now I'm just gonna, I did also cut out some extras just in case I messed up on the first one. So I'm going ahead and cutting out one with just a little bit of a white border around the outside of the postage stamp. Now I'm taking my craft, uh, I'm taking a ruler and a craft knife and cutting out that square on the inside. Now if you have the right size die you can do it using that or even a rotary trimmer um, as long as you're really careful not to cut the extra parts of the windows. This is something I don't do very often so I am going old school and just using my craft knife which again I'm not really good at either but it seemed to work out great. Now I've got that all cut out Santa fits perfectly inside that window and I'm taking some 1 8 inch score tape and I'm running that all around the inner edge of that window. The reason I want to do the inner edge is because the this frame that I made is a little bit bigger on the outside than the frame around Santa and that's actually perfect so that it makes sure that everything is covered like I want but the adhesive is going on that inner part of the frame now this is something that you could have done before doing the foam tape um, there's really no correct order for doing this but to be honest on this card I wasn't exactly sure what I was going to do next as I went along so this part was something I thought of after I'd already got created the shaker. And now I'm going ahead and pulling back some of that release paper like normal. I'm adding those couple of little um, flags there so I've got some places that are not, that the adhesive's not exposed so that I can line this up perfectly and won't have any kind of issues with it. So I'm just pressing that down and pulling off the extra strips of excuse me, of a release paper and now we've got Santa in a pretty little window. As a bonus, so another Monica thing that I had done is I had provided the background for you from the postcards um, 
This is something new that I did not know you could do in Word, but you can actually, when you're in Word, you can do some editing of your images, including removing the background. So I was really surprised I was able to do that. So I didn't need to go and use that online service that I've shown you guys in the past. If this is something that you're interested in seeing, leave a comment below, let me know, and I'll do a video specifically on, all, on how I'm doing um, any kind of editing of my digital images. So I pretty much just remove the background and then cut out I fussy cut this out my scan and cut could not <laughs> couldn't really see all the lines because Santa is has got so much white on the edges it couldn't read that very well so I went ahead and sat on the couch watching TV with my hubby and just fussy cut these out one night a couple of days ago now I'm putting some of that score tape on the back again and releasing all of the release paper so I can adhere this to that shaker. What I'm going to do is I'm going to layer it right on top of Santa. So depending on what angle you're looking at, you could see Santa in the background or you'll just see Santa sitting in front of that window with all the shaker bits behind him. And that finishes up this part of the shaker. Now I'm going to go ahead and adhere that down onto this absolutely gorgeous red snowflake pattern paper. Um, this is what really drew my eye as soon as I saw the paper pack. Uh, the red background basically has a little bit of a glow in one part with the pretty um, snowflakes. I just love this paper. So I'm, I put some more... <coughs> double-sided adhesive tape on the back of this shaker and then I'm just taking off each of those little pieces of release paper and then I'm going to place it onto my um, my red and white panel um, at an angle. I didn't want it to be quite straight give it a kind of a little bit of a quirky look so I'm putting it down there and this point I wasn't sure what I wanted to do next. So I'm taking out my my snowflakes I'm thinking no I think I'm ready to do that and then I decided no I want something more on the front so I'm adding one of those little postcard um, one of those little sorry postage stamps this is the one with a little angel this is just so darling I remember images like this from when I was a kid they must have been vintage then because I was not around back in the 20s when these were designed but I'm popping up one edge because it is going partially over that um, that shaker and then I'm going to use my art glitter glue to to um, adhere the rest of it down. She is just so, so precious. I think this is coming together so nicely. And to be honest, that doesn't happen a lot on my cards this early on. Um, at this point, I could have just popped it on a card base and been done, and it would have been great. But instead, I decided I wanted to add a matting layer. Now, what I did is I took the other pattern paper that was in there, sized the image down, and then basically in Word, cropped it and created a continuous pattern of those those um closer lined <coughs> sorry of uh, the plaid and then I cut it down to fit an A2 size card and realized that my initial little panel was a little bit too big so I trimmed it down so now it's got a quarter inch around the sides of that all of that was done with my bypass paper trimmer like normal and then I decided I wanted to distress the edges a little bit using some ink that I just got in I hadn't even opened it up yet this is the new cranberry fizz from um, Catherine Pooler it's a real nice red burgundy color and I this is gonna work so well on so many of my um, Christmas projects so so I'm just trying it out and now I'm going to ink the edges and um, this is something that I did quite a while back and haven't done a whole lot of yet uh, again until this um, Halloween season and then I started doing more of the inking but I'm not real good at it yet you can see I got a little bit too much ink in one area but oh well it's handmade not Hallmark so I'm gonna ink up each of the edges and then blend a little bit of that ink a little further in so it's got that kind of cranberry um, edging on there and I think it just looks so lovely then I am going to <clears throat> excuse me then I'm going to go ahead and put that main panel that we just finished doing the shaker panel put that on there and 
it's a perf it is it's just perfect so first I'm going to adhere that matte panel down using some art glitter glue that I need to refill it's not wanting to come out because there's not enough glue left in there so I'm going ahead and I'm adding that to the back of that inked up panel and then I'm going to add that to my card base And next I'm going to add that main panel we've been working on all day, that shaker panel. I'm putting art glitter glue on the back of that and then I'm going to put that on my card as well. And this time I am again going to go at a little bit of an angle so Santa turns out to being a pretty much straight. But I like that, that extra textured look that having everything a little bit wonky gives it. It looks so nice. Then I'm going to go ahead and start adding some of those snowflakes onto the front as embellishments. You know, kind of the stuff that we were working on at the very beginning of this video. At this point you're thinking, why isn't she done yet? <laughs> anyway, I'm taking my my jewel picker and trying, trying, and trying, and trying to add those little snowflakes onto the front of the card. For some reason, the jewel picker just was not wanting to hold on to them. I'm having to actually add a little bit more glue in one of the places I had just done. And I'm going to use those reverse tweezers to add these little snowflakes. And I'm going to do both the blue and the white so I'm going to grab one of the white ones and I put it on and realize I can't see it and you know I kind of try to stick to rule of three but odd numbers work well as well so I'm going ahead and adding two more to this corner and this time in places that you can actually see the white snowflake so that works out good then I'm gonna add a few of those on to the other end as well now after finishing all of this up I decided that I thought that some little gems did this part off screen so you'll see that in the final photos but I decided that little gems in those um, snowflakes would look so awesome and so that's what I finished this one up with this card was so much fun and I hope that you are inspired to do some Christmas crafting and I would love to see what you create. So come join my Facebook group, Crafting with Debbie, and show us your creations. I've left a link down in the description box below. Be sure also to check out all of the other crafters on the TaylorMade Cards for You design team because I know they will have a lot of inspirational projects for you to see. Plus, as a bonus, Monica has generously provided a discount code for you. Oh, and if you make anything using ideas from one of my Christmas craft videos, please post a picture and tag me at hashtag Debbie J's Crafting Corner and at hashtag DJCC Christmas 2020. You can also see all of my Christmas videos for 2020 by clicking on the hashtag DJCC Christmas 2020 down in the video title. Here are some other videos that you may be interested in. Thank you so much for dropping by and remember if I can make it you can too